At 1020 kilohertz, the wavelength is about 294 meters. We could compare this to the 61 meters, the meter length of the radiating element. But first, from ba basic antenna theory, any structures that are within roughly one wavelength, which in this case is 294 meters, of the radiating element can impact how the antenna radiates because the region within one wavelength of the antenna is what's called the near field of the antenna. In this picture, we can see that the ground is in the near field of the antenna. The ground is only 13.7 uh, meters away. So the presence of the ground will impact how the antenna radiates. But if we look more carefully at this image, we can also see that there are some cables or wires extending horizontally away from this antenna. These cables are a height at a height of about three meters above the ground. So actually it turns out that this antenna has what's called a counter poise made of over three kilometers of copper wire. Looking down on the antenna from the sky, this is what a typical counterpoise looks like. Looking at it this way, the ground is behind the counterpoise and the antenna is in front of the counterpoise, so it would be coming out of the screen. Counterpoises are useful at frequencies near and below one megahertz for two particular reasons. One, the antenna needs to be grounded, but at frequencies near or below one megahertz, if the actual ground under the antenna is used for the grounding system, we need to consider that the ground under the antenna has a finite resistance. So it's not a PEC, perfect electric conductor. So a lot of power can be lost through the imperfect ground under the antenna at these frequencies. Another source of loss for this kind of antenna is the skin depth of the ground. At one megahertz and below, the skin depth of the ground is actually quite large, so there can be dielectric losses from the penetration of the radio waves into the ground near the antenna. In other words, counterpoises are often very useful because they provide a lower loss resistance and also less dielectric losses than the underlying ground would provide. And both of these characteristics allow for more of the transmitter power to be radiated. Putting all this together, the total height of the radiating element, which is the mast here, is 61 meters long. Then since the radiating element is 10.7 meters above the counterpoise, the total length of the antenna above the counterpoise ground plane is 71.7 meters. So if this is the counterpoise here, and here is the radiating element. This total length turns out to be about lambda over four, where the wavelength was 294 meters. As a result, this antenna is approximately a quarter wave monopole antenna over a ground plane. Here's a diagram of how a monopole antenna works. Above the ground plane, the radiation pattern is the same as for that of a dipole antenna. Here's the dipole antenna. This dotted line is an image current Physically, there isn't actually a current of electrons moving vertically in the, up in the ground. So there aren't a bunch of electrons here moving in the ground up towards the surface of the ground underneath the monopole. But electrons along the surface of the ground interact with the fields produced by the monopole antenna. That thinking of the ground as producing an image current is useful for visualizing the radiated electromagnetic fields above the ground. Here is the radiation pattern of a half-wave dipole in free space. The radiation from the dipole is symmetrical around the dipole axis. Here's the dipole axis. So this would be the z direction. And the maximum radiation propagates horizontally away from the antenna. So we're, for our quarter-wave monopole antenna, the radiation pattern will look like the top half of this radiation pattern. So I could get rid of this. This would be our ground plane.
and the same thing here, we wouldn't have this lower part, but we get the same behavior in the top half above the ground plane. Now since the direction of maximum radiation is horizontally away from the monopole, does this mean that the range of our geolocation system will be limited by the distance between the antenna and the horizon? Meaning we won't be able to receive the signal over here past the horizon?